Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In yesterday's episode, we featured this really cool rental team with Rabombi and Gudra, so we'll be playing a couple more games with it today. Once again, this team was created by one of my Twitch subscribers, and they were able to win a small tournament that I held for my Twitch subscribers over till the weekend, over the weekend, so thank you to them for providing the team, and congrats to them once again for winning. And guys, I'll be streaming more frequently on Twitch, especially now that my classes are over. I have one final homework assignment and one final exam in the next week, and then I'm officially done with university, or at least undergrad, so I'm really excited to be finishing things up. And to everyone that's also going through exams right now, I'm wishing you guys the best of luck. And let's just jump into today's episode. As always, if you guys enjoyed, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. We're up against a relatively standard team comp, but Primarina's on it. I think Primarina is actually probably one of like the most interesting Pokemon, especially in the last couple of weeks that I think is it's just super good. And it's one of my favorite Pokemon to use, actually. And I think uh, Dragapult is what really scares me here. If my opponent didn't have Dragapult, I would probably focus more on Gudra in this game. But the threat of Haze from the Dusclops plus Dragapult makes me a little scared. Although if there's anything I should have learned from yesterday's episode, it's that when I don't bring Gudra, I lose. So, I don't know. We could still go with Gudra. Like, Dynamax Gudra isn't terrible. Because we do have Double Fairy in the back. My, what I'm worried about, though, is just like Togekiss and Dragapult as a lead. I feel like Dynamax Lapras is honestly really good here. Uh, especially because of weakness policy, and it's relatively hard for my opponent to not activate that policy if they're not bringing... I mean, like, Tyranitar and Killer will probably activate the weakness policy. So, like, we could go with Lapras. I think Sylveon's excellent in this game. My opponent does not have any fairy resists, but I'm not sure I want to lead it. I think I want it in the back. So, I could go, like, Incineroar Lapras. That's actually pretty free, I think. With... Mm, I kind of like Mimikyu, though, in case my opponent tries to go with the Trick Room route. So we go like Mimikyu with Incineroar and Sylveon in the back. I'd really like Gudra in this game if my opponent had Dragapult. And yesterday we were able to win against a Dragapult team because I could tell they were going to max the Arcanine. But in this game, I don't feel super comfortable with it. So we'll see how this game goes. As always, if you guys enjoyed Road Train, please share your support by leaving a like. And question of the day, uh, yeah, I'm curious if you guys have any good jokes. <laughs> always in the mood for some good humor. So let me know in the comments below. It's going to be Togekiss and Tyranitar. Okay, so Gudra actually could have been alright here because what we could have done was just like Dynamaxed it. Although, like, Kiss could max and Crit Kiss would be kind of annoying, and I think, like, Lapras is actually in a totally fine spot right now. Yeah, this is actually okay with me, I think. Because what I can do turn one is just go for the max resonance into Togekiss and switch Mimikyu out into Incineroar for the Intimidate. If you max the Tyranitar, well, then you're going to activate my weakness policy. If you max Togekiss, well, you can't crit me. So, this is also honestly not too bad. But, yeah, the main reason was because I thought Lapras had a, just a better matchup overall against anything my opponent could bring, especially the Dragapult. Like, and if Dragapult was a lead here, I would have a really, really good spot. Um, whereas, if I had gone with Gudra and Rabombi, then, I don't know, things would be a little tougher, I would say. And the other tricky thing about Rabombi is, like, you can read, like, Follow Me makes it relatively useless. Um, especially, like, Togekiss. They're gonna max first, okay. So, either means it's fast Tyranitar, or it's just Togekiss Dynamaxing. Okay, it is to Actually, I don't know if this Lapras has any speed investment, so it might just be faster. Uh, even without much speed investment. That's still fine with me. I'm not too worried about Tyranitar maxing, uh, because I will get the Intimidate and the screens off. That being said, it's probably going to be a max Rockfall just coming out turn 1 onto Lapras, and that's really going to pack a punch. But one win con we can go for in this game is Parish Song, which is kind of what I was trying to go for in that Lapras game yesterday. Um, but I didn't really do enough with Lapras, but that's because we were facing Snarl and Life Dew. I don't think we'll be... Uh, in as much of a pickle this time around. But Tarantar being faster, this make things a little tougher, I would say. Uh, okay, just hopping for Dazzling Gleam, that's fine. My opponent might have targeted Mimikyu for fear of Trick Room, so we'll see. It's gonna be Max Rockfall. Yep, goes into the Mimikyu slot. So that actually just cleanly knocks out Incineroar, but I'm actually okay with that trade because I don't think Incineroar is that important in this game. Life Orb Tarantar, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I'm honestly fine with that because I get the G-Max Resonance off. Um, I wonder if that's just one-shots here. Oh, so close. But I'll take it. Yeah, we get the screens up, which is the most important thing. And now what we can do is actually just bring a Mimikyu and go for Shadow Sneak, I think, onto the Tyranitar. Yeah, we want to stall out the Dynamax right now. So if we, sh or sorry, Shadow Sneak onto the Togekiss. And then we can just Max Geyser into Tyranitar because we don't have to be worried about activating a Weakness Policy. So I think that's fine with me. Um, 
Yeah, after I think after a Max Geyser, Tyranitar will be in play rough KO range because we are Life Orb. So if you go for Rockfall onto Lapras, well, you activate our Regents policy. If you target the Mimikyu, you only break our Disguise. So we're trading Disguise for another turn of Dynamax, which is honestly worth it, in my opinion. So not bad here. But yeah, honestly, like Gujarat could have honestly put in a lot of work against this lead. Uh, Tokyo is actually going to switch out to Conkeldor, which I'm fine with. Um, cause that's going to be in play rough KO range. I could have played rough there to cover the switch in, but I just really didn't want to miss. Cause a miss would mean that you break my disguise and you potentially knock out Mimikyu as well. But, uh, my opponent smartly goes for max darkness here instead of rock fall. So, um, very smartly actually playing around the threat of a weakness policy right now. So good plays by my opponent. I think this is still fine though. Uh, special defense drop doesn't really matter too much to me. Uh, disguise gets broken. Play rough onto Conkeldor there would have been really nice, but I don't know. The risk versus reward of them staying in and us missing, maybe it would have been worth it. I gotta think about it more. We'll get the Max Geyser off though, which is obviously quite good for us here. Tyranitar takes that pretty well, but it's definitely gonna faint from another Max Geyser. I wonder if it's in KO range from a Life or Play Rough right now. I am not 100% sure it is. That's my fear. I don't think it is, honestly. See, we have Sylveon in the back, so we're actually setting ourselves up for a pretty decent endgame, because they don't have any fairy resists. And we have priority quick attack. We have screens up right now. I think at yeah, with Intimidate we should be able to take a rock fall. So I think we can just geyser into Tyranitar and just play rough into Conkeldur. That seems relatively safe to me. My opponent might go for a protect here, but they don't. Okay, good. Yeah, I was thinking it might be a salt vest Conkeldur, so with Life Orb we should just one-shot it as we do, so that's good. So if we Pick up a double knockout here and Mimikyu doesn't faint. We can just perish long time this game. So let's see if Mimikyu can hang on from this rock fall. Nice. Okay, that's really good for us then. Although we won't knock out Tyranitar, I guess, but that's fine. Well done by my opponent, though, to play around the weakness policy this entire time. Um, that was super smart on their end. And yeah, unfortunately, we fall just short of a KO, but that's okay. Um, both Tyranitar and the, um, Togekiss are now in KO range from Sylveon, Quick Attack. Plus, Sylveon honestly beats, like, pretty much everything my opponent could have in the back, I think. Which is why I, like, wanted to conserve it, and I'm, that's why I forced Mimikyu in first. Okay, Togekiss comes out. Uh, could be worth it to... Let me think. In this position, because there is the possibility of Togekiss having Protect... I mean, the safe play here is to obviously just Shadow Sneak Togekiss, right? But it could have um, Protect. Uh, but if it Protects, that's fine, right? Because Sylveon should win this late game for us. So, Because we still have Screens up, too, and Tyranitar is Intimidated. So I think it's actually fine to just Shadow Sneak Togekiss and Ice Beam the Tyranitar. Yeah. Might mean that we can't Parasong, but I think... Um, helping Hand. Ooh. I mean, Rock Slide with Helping Hand shouldn't KO us anyway, but that is a reason to it. I don't know. I didn't know if Shadow Seek was KOing Tyranitar. I feel like with Life Orb, it probably does, right? So it's probably worth it to have gone for it. Okay, so he's going to have to hit the Rock Slide. does connect on both. This does activate our weakness policy, though. Oh, Lapras takes that. Nice. If we don't get flinched, I think we're that should just be game. If we do get flinched, things get a little trickier, so let's see. But screen's coming up huge for us there. And uh, yeah, I bet Shadow Sneak probably KO Tyranitar. Oh, I forgot he's Life Orb. Yeah, he just faints anyway. Okay, nice. So that's not bad. Uh, we end up not getting flinched there anyway. So in the back, it could be Dragapult, which Sylveon just hard beats. Dusclops, which definitely doesn't win. And Primarina, which I think is probably the scariest Pokemon, mainly because it might be Assault Vested. And it is going to be the Primarina. So now the question is, how fast is Primarina? Because we could pretty easily just go for Thunder and Hyper Voice. Yeah, there's no reason not to go. Oh, actually, Mystical Fire is an interesting option solely to decrease, decrease the special attack, I think. Um, Lapras is faster. I think just Hyper Voice is better here. There's no need for the special attack drops. Yeah, so I'm just going to Thunder and Hyper Voice. I don't want to Perish Song without knowing how the speed interactions work right now. Prim actually protects. Okay. That makes sense. You saw uh, screens and rain, but protecting there is actually fine because it means you're not assault vested, which is very good information. Okay, let's see. Let's go. Screens wears off. Uh, let's see. Two turns of rain. 
You probably just move. I don't have protect, right? So I think I just have to go for thunder and hyper voice. And I think you have to moon blast Lapras and hope that KOs. A bower faster. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, Lapras was perfect for us in this game. That should just be a knockout here, I think. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, the main thing in this game that was good was that uh, we had a pretty solid lead. Uh, the screams were really good. And despite us not getting the weakness policy activated, we were actually still in a really good spot for, like, a lot of the game. Because uh, that first Intimidate, like... It was actually really good that I didn't take any damage with Dynamax Lapras because my opponent was afraid of weakness policy and rightfully so because we obviously have it. But uh, by doing that, I was actually able to get a lot of free damage across the board. And yeah, they just didn't have any fairy resist. So both Mimikyu and Sylveon looked really, really good on paper there, um, which is part of the reason why both of those Pokemon are you know, really strong options. But without any fairy resists, like I think the one better play I could have made was potentially risking the play rough to turn Togekiss switched out. But I don't know. I mean, I was content getting free Shadow Sneak damage against anything in the back. Really interesting um, team from our next opponent here. They've got Mimikyu. They've got... I mean, the main thing that I'm looking at is definitely the Weezing. Um, but, yeah. Duraludon and Excadrill. So, double Water, double Steel, Mimikyu, and, and double Fairy. Which is interesting. Uh, today might be a Lapras kind of day. I mean, Lapras is pretty good here. Especially with Weakness Policy. I don't want to be forcing Gudra if it's not the best matchup for it. The main reason I don't like Gudra too much here is because of the Mimikyu. And there are a lot of threats to Gudra. The thing is, like, Max Warm Wind from Duraludon still does some damage. Weezing can cancel out our ability. We could still go with Gudra. I kind of want to give Gudra a try. I don't know. Just, like, Dynamax Lapras seems really good here because of... There are so many physical threats, though. We could boost Gudra's speed through a speed swap. But then, then I'm pretty weak to Duraludon, I guess, right? Like, Duraludon's the main thing I'm worried about here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can bring regular Gudra, though. But I think Lapras works out pretty good for us once again here. So I'm thinking of Lapras Ensign with... I could just go Mimikyu Sylveon again. No, I think I'm actually going to try Sylveon and regular Gudra. So I'm going into this game expecting to Dynamax the Lapras, but regular Gudra here could still be pretty interesting with the Assault Vest. Probably not the best Pokemon choices, but I have yet to play a game with this team where I brought regular Gudra, so I at least want to try it out to see if it works and if there's actually good reason to bring it. Although I guess on paper it doesn't really look that great in this matchup, because it's not like I'm using it for much, but we'll see. I mean, Lapras and Weezing, okay. Gudra could have been alright here, because we could have just gone for- Oh, I guess, like, the thing is, uh, yeah, Neutralizing Gas just cancels us out here. But I think that's fine. I mean, I'm content just maxing, going for resonance into the wheezing, I think. And uh, dealing with the opposing Lapras might be annoying. So I think we might want to look for, um, <coughs> excuse me, a Perish Song endgame here as well. Yeah, I'm going to max resonance. I mean, my opponent might just max Geyser into us. So I could just hard switch into Gudra, actually. I actually like that option, I think. So, this actually kind of justifies me bringing Gudra, I guess. Mm. Okay, let's go for that. Let's get screens up, let's get Gudra in, and then let's go from there. Big question is whether it's Light Clay. I want to say it's Light Clay, because my opponent's team is, like, a little defensive. Or it looks like it would, would want to use, like, multiple turns of screens. They're faster than us, but that's fine. So now the big question is also, like, does my opponent just go for Max Lightning onto us? Because if they do and they activate our weakness policy, we're in a really good spot. Uh, abilities being cancelled out right now pretty much aren't relevant, other than it means... If, in fact, it actually helps me, because it means uh, I could max Geyser the Lapras, but uh, I don't think I'd ever really want to be in a position to do that. So I swapped out Incineroar there, because, um, yeah, if the Lapras is just faster than us and one-shots us with a max Geyser, that's kind of a waste, because we didn't even really get anything off with Intimidate, and Gudra is actually a really good switch into it, so, yeah. Honestly, had we gone with Rabombi and Gudra, things wouldn't have been terrible. But I guess they also wouldn't have been super good because I'd have to be worried about activating a weakness policy on Lapras, and I can't really touch the Weezing. So, Weezing opts to protect, which isn't too surprising, but that's fine. I'll still get screens up by targeting it. And my opponent's just going to go for Max Resonance. Okay, so this is... Ah, Entel the Incense Slot. That's a really good play. AV Gudra takes that, as you see, but still, very good prediction. 
I don't mind making that switch out though, mainly because it's just the risk versus reward just isn't worth it there for me. And I think instance could be pretty helpful for everything else my opponent has in the back. So that's fine. Okay. The scary thing right now is I don't know if it's weakness policy Lapras and I really don't want to activate a weakness policy with Guja right now. I think we just attack here, honestly. Like, I, I kind of just want to go for a Max Geyser. I guess the problem here is that I actually can't really touch the Weezing other than Rock Slide, and Rock Slide would activate a Weakness Policy. I guess screens are up, though, so I actually should just be prioritizing going for a KO. So I'm actually going to take the risk here in Rock Slide. Because I'll be able to find out if it is Weakness Policy or not. That's good information. Yeah, it's not. Okay, yeah, I figured it was Clay. Which means we really have to try to win this game with Parasong, I think. But AV Gujra is a tank. It takes these attacks so well. So, I don't, Max Geyser I don't think will KO here, unfortunately. But we'll at least get to see if there's, like, a berry. God, it takes that so well. And I think this is the problem with Lapras, where we don't get enough out of Dynamax. Yep, it's berry as well. Okay. We really need to KO that thing, too, because... Okay, Sludge Bomb comes out. That shouldn't KO us. <laughs> yeah, Kudra's a beast. I think if you're my opponent this next turn, you just protect. Um, yeah, you should just go for a protect. And I guess target down Lapras. But we have Max Lightning here. I, I like. I really expect the Weezing to protect. It's not really doing much to me anyway if it doesn't. So I think I'm just going to go for the Max Lightning here. And the... Uh, power whip just to maximize my damage actually super power might have been better because i can't miss that yep there's a protect yeah I, mean, I called that right but this is still a really tricky game i think unfortunately uh we do connect with power whip though which is nice that's actually pretty good damage all things considered i gotta say uh he's actually gonna go for geyser okay into lapras into gudra okay i mean gudra was fainting there anyway so that's just a free attack for me my Lapras were faster, I'd feel really good actually right now, but unfortunately it's not. That being said, it's really not the end of the world. We get Max Lightning off, this is going to do not very much damage. But it does set up the terrain, Dynamax ends now, and I've got Thunder to use for the next couple of turns, so... I wonder if my opponent has Thunder or not. They haven't gone for it, but they, it also might have just been a smart play on their end to play around the Weakness Policy. I don't want to bring Sylveon yet without um, having KO'd the... Weezing, so I think I have to bring in Incineroar here, and then what I can do is just go for Fake Out onto Lapras and uh, Hydro Pump into the Weezing. I'm still trying to win this game through Parasong, I think. That's what I want to set myself up for if I can. I could also Fake Out Thunder the Lapras here, but Lapras could easily protect. So let's see, we have two turns of Aurora Veil, as does my opponent, three turns of Rain. Uh, Intimidate doesn't go off, but I can Fake Out. We're down 3 4. My opponent mainly has physical type attackers in the back. I actually don't even think Hydro Pump and Rain KOs the Weezing. So for that reason, I might actually aggressively target down Lapras here. Fake out Thunder into it's really obvious though. So let's see. Okay, no protect. Good. That's very good. Flinches. It should be screens if I had to guess. Okay, that KO is good. So we need one more knockout and then we can power song. Just getting that knockout might be pretty hard. It's gonna go for Sludge Bomb onto Lapras, okay? Okay, no poison, which is fortunate. This Weezing is interesting because, like, it actually hasn't been too annoying through its ability, but it's actually its typing that's giving me the most trouble. Um, I don't have too much that can actually hit Weezing very hard. Steraladon comes out interesting, okay. Well, I definitely want a parting shot here, I think. Parting Shot, Duraludon, and I think Hydro Pump into Weezing, yeah. Weezing honestly does damage here, too. He's actually happening for Draco Meteor, okay. On to Instin. That's actually the best case scenario, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't even activate our berry, interesting. If we are able to knock out the Weezing with Hydro Pump, I don't think we'd be able to, but if we, we are... Um, then we just win the game, because now you're stuck in with uh, Duraludon. But screens are up, so yeah, I didn't think it would KO. But now Duraludon's at minus 3 special attack, so it's really not putting on much uh, pressure damage-wise. And like I said, as long as I get another knockout, I should be able to win this game with Parasong. 
So Lapras has definitely been putting in work today. Um, quite happy about that, its performance. Sludge Bomb. Okay, doubled up on Soul Sylveon. So nice play there. No poison, fortunately. Honestly, I think the safer play... I mean... Uh, yeah, my opponent does have screens. So I, I think I really do want a Parasong. I mean, it's pretty safe to just Hydro Pump here, though, right? And Hyper Voice. Actually, I should be faster. So, Ice Beam, Hyper Voice. Like, Ice Beam might not KO, but Hyper Voice should do enough where it KOs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at minus three special attack, Flash Cannon from Life Orb Duraldon shouldn't KO us. Okay, he's gonna protect Weezing, but that's okay. Oh, he's actually Dracoing again. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, we take that with no problem. I think we're in a pretty good spot now. I mean, it obviously comes down to what my opponent's last one is. Actually, best case scenario is we don't knock out the Duraludon here, and it hangs on with, like, just a little bit of HP, where we can quick attack to finish it off. Let's see. Wait. Oh! <laughs> I was so confused for a second. I totally forgot about uh, Pixelate being cancelled. That's actually really interesting. You don't see that every day, right? That's super funny, yeah. But it's fine. I mean, Duraldon's at minus five special attack now, so I'm content just Ice Beam Hyper Voicing. Hyper Voice will definitely pick up the KO here because it's neutral. Uh, yeah, regular effect. Actually, I mean, we could just Ice Beam Duraldon, right? I guess I just don't know if Hyper Voice would KO the Weezing otherwise, so I'd rather just target that down. Yeah, especially because it protected last turn. Okay, Duraldon switches out. That is Incinero. Or sorry, um, Excadrill. Okay, this is going to be a tight end game, I think. I could have maybe predicted that. Okay, so neutralizing gas words off. Mold Breaker comes back out. Yeah, this is actually gonna be really close, I think. Cause like now I can parish song, right? But the question is, does my opponent just ag aggressively target down Lapras? I could also just attack, right? Like what I want to do this next turn is switch Sylveon out into Incineroar, so then I get the intimidate and I have fake out pressure. But the big question is what does the Duraludon do? Because I think actually Perish Song and switching out into Incineroar works here. I could have just Hydro Pumped to there as well, but it could be... No, it's actually not AV, right? Because it took so much damage from Hyper Voice. Uh, I actually can't tell. I mean, that was single target Hyper Voice from Pixie Plate. Okay, either way, I'm going to switch into Incineroar. Um, like, the Duraludon switching out there was super obvious. I could have Mystical Fired instead. But then I guess there's the threat of Weakness Policy Excadrill. It's gonna Iron Head, okay. Flash Cannon into... Okay. Good play. Very good play. So I could have stayed in and Mystical Fire there, but I didn't really want to do that. Actually, I think my opponent now probably wins this um, off that read. We could have swapped out that Lapras into Incineroar. That was actually probably the better play now that I think about it. Mm. But it's not over yet. I mean, I have Fake Out here, right? So, like, I could just Fake Out the Duraldon Mystical Fire. I think that's the play I'm going for here. You might just Protect. Uh, that was a really good read. And it was a pretty easy read to make, too. Okay, he's going to Protect Excadrill, but not Duraldon. We could have Fake Out Hyper Voiced here, too. Oh, no. It is, sorry. Yeah, Excadrill's just max speed. Okay, that's fine. So, then the question is, do you have High Horsepower or EQ? If you have... High horsepower, you can just very easily high horsepower flash cannon. I actually think I kind of tossed this game a little bit, because I feel like I had a pretty good board positioning. I also messed up um, in terms of the hyper voice turn, but I don't think I had a, like, a significantly better play to make that turn. Yeah, I'm going to protect here then, and flare blitz. So let's see. If it's high horsepower, we have to hope for a miss. Or, I mean, I think Ensign could maybe survive this. Well, it's a shame that the Draco didn't even put us in berry range. He's actually Iron Heading and... Is he Dracoing the instant? Oh. Unfortunately, I think we get knocked out here. Ah, uh, that's close. <sighs> that crit might have mattered. If we survive, we win the game, actually, I think. But I could have played this better, too. I'm not too happy about how I played it. Because once Duraldon was at minus three special attack... Actually, I mean, I think we survive an Iron Head there, too. 
Can we still... Now, now we can't win because you can just double up. But I guess in that... Let's see. Let's see if Ironhead would have KO'd us. Oh, it would have anyway. Okay. So that was... That made sense then. Um... Yeah, I think, I don't know, this game, like, I felt like I had a pretty good uh, advantage. The Parish Song setup definitely worked, but uh, my opponent made just a good read. Like, if I just actually Hyper Voice there, too, in that turn, I could have won. So, in fact, actually, looking back at it, I think the better play in that position is to not switch out into Incineroar, and it's actually just to click Hyper Voice and Parish Song. Although, I guess if I get Parish Song off, but you knock out Sylveon, I don't have Protect on either Pokemon, so it's kind of still tough to win with Parish Song. So, it would have been a read, basically, at that point, right? I could obviously have switched out Lapras out into Incineroar, but then Sylveon can just get dunked on. So, yeah, it depends on whether I make the read correctly or not. Um, I think the main turn I messed up was the turn Duraludon switched out. That was super obvious, so I should have played, made a better read that turn. But, yeah. Like, if I went for Mystical Fire, that would have done a lot more to Excadrill, although it wouldn't have KO'd anyway, but I don't know. Um, the main thing is that their Lapras was faster, but let's go into the third game today. They've got another Dragapult. I really just want to go with the <laughs> the Gudra route. Could Gudra work? I mean, they have they have Intimidate. They've I mean, this does not scream like a Gudra game, quite honestly. And Lapras on paper looks better here once again. So I think today is Lapras day. Yeah, I mean, like if I were to bring Gudra, I'd really be forcing it here because I'm bringing it into two fairies and two dragons. And it's not like, it, like it just doesn't really pick up one hit KOs either uh, anyway. Even with like absorb, and I have to worry about Tailwind as well. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go Gudra, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to. Like I think we could just go with the same route we've been going. Like Gudra was actually a decent switch in in that last game though, so it was able to do something passively, which is always cool. But I think in this one I'll probably just go with the Lapras. I'm not sure I want to lead in Cinder actually. Uh, Incineroar is always a safe lead, though, because I can fake out and pivot out with Parting Shot. I'm curious if the uh, crit mattered onto the Incineroar, because I, it probably didn't, because, like, without screens, that Draco did, like, I guess it did, like, 40%, so it might have been a roll, honestly. It is Life Orb Draco Media from Duraludon, so that's a pretty powerful attack. But, yeah, without having a speed advantage in that um, last game, things were kind of tricky. But I still feel like I could have played better, and, like... I also forgot, like, I thought the Ice Beam Hyper Voice turn was super free. Actually, that was my mistake. Yeah, I should have just Ice Beamed into Duraludon there. Okay, so they're going to go with Duraludon and Sylveon, which I think I'm fine with. Um, yeah, Lapras isn't too scared here. I think I just play around the Duraludon. I set up screens. So, like, turn one, go for G-Max Resonance onto Sylveon and fake out it. And then what I can do is just Parting Shot Duraludon on the following turn. I don't need Incineroar for damage right now. Once they get screens up, Lapras is in a really good spot in this game. And yeah, if I went with Gudra here, I would have gotten destroyed, I think. Because, <laughs> I mean, sure, I have Assault Vest, but it's still two things that hit it for really good damage. Plus, if you Dynamax the Duraludon, Max Warman is decreasing my attack, so... I think it goes to show that when you're using things that m might be really good, it can also just be, like, super bad in matchups, so you, like... Always don't want to just force it. We've seen this throughout the case of Road to Rank with so many teams we've used when we have like kind of eccentric sets for Pokemon or combos, but yeah, you just want to be smart. So I, I'm expecting Duraludon on a Dynamax. I don't think that's too much of a problem because I don't think Lapras is too scared of it. Um, and if you max Lightning, you would activate our weakness policy and that would be good. So it's like here, I'm going to definitely get screens off and Duraludon will get one attack off, but I deny Sylveon attack. If you max Lightning, it also means you can't Yawn. And even if Sylveon does have Yawn, we can just Max Lightning ourselves to you know, change it up. That being said, I honestly think Duraludon's a kind of a tricky Pokemon to go up against for this team, because we don't have a great way to just like do massive amounts of damage to it in one hit, especially without a ground type. So, you saw how it gave us some trouble in that last game. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I think the one turn I blundered was forgetting about um, Weezing's ability. Actually, pretty good damage on a Sylveon. He's actually going for max darkness. Okay, just for the spit death drop, that makes sense. Pretty good damage, but I'm fine with that. I think what I can do this next turn is I might actually max guard with the Lapras and parting shot. I'll see how much G Max Res does here, actually. Ah, that's a lot of damage. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a ton of damage, honestly. And I'm faster than Sylveon, so... I mean, I'm pretty sure Max Geyser just picks up the KO here. We did have a little bit of fake-out chip damage, but this is also stronger. So what I want to honestly do is just go for a Max Geyser and a Parting Shot into Duraludon. I think that's pretty safe, so let's try it out. Okay, he's just going to Max Darkness again. I mean, my opponent's going for Max Darkness Hyper Voice here, basically, but Lapras takes that with relative ease. If we don't KO Sylveon, it'll be a question. Like, the question is who I want to switch into, and it'll probably be Mimikyu, but if we do KO it, I think we just go out into Sylveon. Okay, we do pick up the knockout. Nice. Uh, that was a crit. I don't think it mattered. I mean, it, this is higher base power. And I think the, the little bit of extra base power compensates. But pretty good scenario here. We get the parting shot off as well. Um, Actually, who did my opponent have in the back? Arcanine... Dragapult. Could go into Mimikyu. Whimsicott. Mimikyu might actually be better, just so I can stall out throughout on Dynamax, because Sylveon still has to worry about a Steel Spike. Whereas Mimikyu here forces you to... if I mean, I basically use the Disguise as a turn to nullify the Dynamax, kind of like what we did in that first game. Yeah. Plus, because I switch out first, my opponent's just going to switch out whatever gives them the advantage anyway, so I think Mimikyu's just a safer bet. So we're at minus two special defense, but Duraldon's at minus one special attack, because Arcanine actually comes out, which is fine by me. If I had to guess, it's going to be Snarl. Uh, no Intimidate, which is interesting, but I guess that's not too surprising. Um, I think I'm actually just going to Max Geyser and switch back out into Incineroar. Yeah, mainly because what my opponent could do is just Snarl, Max Steel Spike into Mimikyu, and I think that's unlikely. Actually, I mean, what's your better play? I guess go for Max Warm Wind or another Max Darkness onto Lapras, but either way, I get the Intimidate off here against Arcanine, which actually is probably offensive, so now that I think about it, it's probably not even... It's going to close combat, I think. Or Wild Charge. <laughs> that did, like, negative damage. Oh, Lapras is just insane. Okay, now we actually might be able to go for a Parasong endgame, then. That was Life Orb Arcanine, by the way, too. Yeah, he's going to double up on the Lapras. So this is going to do a considerable amount. That actually almost KO'd us. So nice play by my opponent, but uh, Mimikyu wasn't doing us any doing us any favors there anyway, so I didn't really mind that too much. If I had to guess, that's um, AB Duraldon. We haven't seen a Life Orb. Obviously, the Life Orb's on the Arcanine, so I'm fine with that. I mean, we're up 4-2. We have Fake Out Pressure now. The question is, uh, what does my opponent bring in? Because I think... The other question is, did they double up on Lapras next turn? I think the Duraldon probably always targets down Lapras, but is whatever coming in able to also pressure? It's going to be with Dragapult, which is interesting. So I think we're in a pretty good spot with Sylveon and um, Mimikyu in the back. I obviously can't even go for Fake Out here, so I think I'd rather just Parting Shot Duraludon, bring that to minus two special attack, because Mimikyu will easily beat the Dragapult. And Parish Song, I doubt I get the Parish Song off, but if for some reason my opponent gave it to me, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. I think Party Shot into Duraldon is fine, just because then it means we take Flash Cannons better. Oh, my opponent just forfeits. Okay. Uh, I don't think that was, like, that was a game where they could have still maybe won. It wasn't 100% over, but I think we were in a really commanding spot, because we still had Disguise on Mimikyu, we had Sylveon in the back, which deals with both Dragon types really well. Um, but, like, you could still win by critting the Sylveon, I think. So, I mean, the scenario there is if you don't double up on, if you don't knock out Lapras and you double up onto Incineroar for some reason... Yeah, but although there's no world in which that happens, I think. Because Dragapult's always going to have something to target Lapras down with. But either way, you're already at minus one special attack with Duraldon. I get the party shot off against the Duraldon, so it's already at minus two special attack. I can then bring out... i probably bring out Mimikyu and then uh, swap Incineroar for, uh, after Lapras goes down. So then I have Incineroar and Mimikyu against uh, minus two special attack Duraldon and Dragapult. And actually what I could do at that point is actually just set up Trick Room. Yeah, I can just fake out Duraldon on Trick Room and there's no way my opponent beats me after Trick Room goes up. Um, because I have Sylveon in the back. So I think that was actually a... Actually, that was probably the 100% win con. But um, I hadn't revealed Sylveon yet, so I mean, it was still possible for my opponent to win. Plus, uh, if I don't set up Trick Room, you can maybe win through crits. But I think because we had Trick Room on Mimic Cube and Disguise and Sylveon on the back um, and Fake Out, it was pretty much a locked up game. So yeah, unfortunately, Gudra doesn't come out at all today, but some pretty good games with GMAX Laprix. And um, I think that second game I still could have played better. Um, the Weezing actually made me completely blunder that one turn. So if you go up against Weezing, make sure you don't make those mistakes because it's very easy to forget. And uh, 
Yeah, the turn that my opponent went for the second Draco Meteor and I went for the Ice Beam Hyper Voice, what I should have done was just Ice Beam into Duraludon and Hyper Voice because um, Hyper Voice, I think, probably would have just KO'd Weezing. Although screens were up, so I didn't know that damage calc, but uh, Ice Beam into Duraludon would have also covered the Switch Hot option in, on that given turn. So uh, I think it would have done enough damage to put it in Quick Attack KO range. Uh, screens were up, so I'd, probably not, but that still would have been a better play. Uh, and then in the late game, my opponent just made that really nice read on doubling up onto Lapras. I kind of got greedy, wanted to try to win a game with Parish Song, but uh, didn't end up working out. But yep, that is how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Please share your support by leaving a like if you did. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace.